Hello everyone and welcome back to another Let's Talk. Today we are going to be talking about E3 2014. I am your host, of course, James Gilzitty from People I Hate Studios. And, well, if you don't know what E3 is, it's uh, the biggest event for video games of the year. Well, of course, second to the Video Junkies Awards show, that is. But E3, if you still want a better explanation, it's kind of like the Keynes Film Festival, but with video games. They show off a lot of video games, they get a lot of good movies and stuff. Um, that's, that's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head that's similar. Uh, but yeah, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Let's Talk. Now, E3 is running from June 10th to the 12th. And of course, everyone's going to be wanting to know about the next big game that's coming out from all the biggest companies. I have a few things that I kind of want to wish for. Uh, before that, though, I have, let me just pull it up on my phone here, the dates, well, the estimated dates for when these, the conferences, uh, press conferences are going to be held. Uh, calendar. Just need to hop on the calendar. I really should have got this, um, better. Okay, on the 9th of June, we have at, now, of course, they had in Pacific time, so I had to convert it to Eastern Standard Time. So this is in Eastern Standard Time, guys. The Microsoft E3 press conference at 12.30 p.m. Then the EA press conference at, not, at 3 p.m. And then the Sony press conference at 9 p.m. Then the day of the show... At around 12 p.m., Nintendo will have their online E3 event again. They did the same thing last year. They didn't have a necessary press conference like all these other companies who are a press thing. But uh, instead, they went online. They did the whole internet thing. And they released a lot of the stuff about their games and everything. They talked more about the Super Smash Bros., um, and they also had the Kong Con Country Trouble of Freeze, and they also announced that, if you remember going back a year ago, uh, if you went up to a Best Buy a few days after the show, after E3, you got to try out a few of the Wii, new Wii U games coming out, like Kong Con Con Trouble of Freeze, and then I think uh, Super Mario 3D World was also there, or Land. But, so let's let's see if they will do something very similar. But enough about that, let's talk about what I'm hoping to see and what I'm most excited for at E3. First off, it's coming from the EA event. Right off the bat, I'm excited. Well, midday, I'm excited. I cannot wait to hear more about, and it has been confirmed, that they are going to be announcing more on this. The new Star Wars Battlefront. We saw a, tra a 30 second trailer that didn't show much last year, but we knew it was in the making. Made by DICE, so it's going to be explosive -y and destructive -y, maybe. And everyone lost their minds, and I, I was one of them included. I personally love the Star Wars Battlefront series. I have Played majority of them. I haven't played the the uh, mobile one, not the mobile ones. The yeah, the ones on like the uh, uh, DS and PSP though. But I really enjoyed Battlefield or Battlefront One and Two. I thought they were extremely fun and really, really great games in general. Not just great Star Wars games, but great games in general. So everyone's excited. And seeing what also seeing if they're going to hop to PS4 or are they well, are they gonna stay on the PS4 Xbox One or are they going to also release it on the PS3 and 360? Granted, people have speculated that it might be coming out around the same time as the new movie 
and that's not supposed to come out till 2015. So if they if they were to release it in 2015, right before the new movie, and released it on the Xbox and or the 360 and the PS3, that'd be a little late, don't you think? I mean, there have been games that have been released on older consoles many years after those older consoles have kind of ran its course. But I mean, like the um, the PS2, the PS2. Uh, FIFA 14 was the last game ever released on it, and I know Konami also released their Pro Evolution Soccer, or winning 11 2014 if you live in Japan, um, on both on the PS2 also, as well as the PS3. So let's see uh, what systems they're coming out for. I mean, they could always throw a curveball, and maybe, you know, maybe it'll come out holiday. You, we don't know. Maybe they've been working on it in secret and, you know, find out that, find out that, uh, you know, coming out sooner rather than later. Another thing that I am really, really waiting for and I can't wait at all, oh my god, is Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, it has been shown on the, on the Kingdom Hearts 3 website that it is only coming out for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yeah, so people people who haven't made the jump yet, or decided to make the jump to the Wii U, you're kind of shit out of luck. I don't know if that's gonna hurt them or not. This is the first time. This is this marks two first for the Kingdom Hearts series. This is the first time that it's being released on a Microsoft console. And it's also the first time that it's being released on two consoles simultaneously. As you remember, no other uh, Kingdom Hearts game was released on two consoles at the same time. Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 were, always, were only released on PS2. The Game Boy game, the Re Chain of Memories was released on a Game Boy. It took a, like, a, I think like a year or two before... Rechain of Memories on the PS2 came out, and then Kingdom Hearts 1.5, and then the new two remix, HD remix. But I can't wait to see the new worlds, and there's been all these different talks on if there's going to be a Frozen world, they're going to go with the newer Disney movies, because beforehand they, they kind of stuck to the older ones, and with Kingdom Hearts 2, the newest one they had was Mulan. They have Mulan? Yeah, they had a Mulan level. It's been so long since I played Kingdom Hearts 2. See if there's going to be a, a Toy Story 1 too. Because I know they, they cut out a Toy Story 1 in some of the uh, earlier ones. So let's let's hope for some another really great title. Pretty much they've always knocked them out of the park. They're great action RPGs. Uh, great for great for like the young kids. It's it's kind of like a my first, it's kind of like a Pokemon kind of thing, except a little bit more complex. I'm not saying that Pokemon isn't complex at all, but I I think the Kingdom Hearts series is a great game to get at least get started into the RPG world, or if you just want a great unique RPG experience. Another thing, of course, I'm going to have to say this, another game that I can't wait to learn more about of at E3 is the new Super Smash Bros. Nintendo has been teasing it for the past year now. They've been releasing, showing off the new characters that are coming out, the Wii Fit Trainer for some reason, Mega Man, um, the Villager from Animal Crossing, and I thought there was one more that was released. That was new, but... But anyway, I want to see, you know, what what they have in store. When when is it coming out? Because that's a problem that Nintendo has had. This that's the main problem with the Wii U is that they do not tell people when their games are coming out. Which brings me to the next thing that I'm excited for is learning about Nintendo's plan for the future. 
what do they plan to do? Do they plan on making another console? Do they have another console in the works? Do they have any ideas on how to make the Wii U better, make it sell better? Do they have a new Legend of Zelda in the works? Because that's all I really care about, is a new Legend of Zelda. If they don't, I'm going to be bummed. Nintendo always seems to shock. Always seems to shock people at E3. They have some very interesting stuff that they tell about. They definitely dropped the ball last year. Well, actually, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I would say Microsoft dropped the ball last year, but Nintendo really didn't do too well last year. And even even after E3 and when Wii U came out and when people started buying it, they really, they started taking, they took a huge hit this year. Let's see how they can rebound. Maybe. Now, here's just a thought here for Nintendo. Maybe they should start making, like, uh, mobile games or something, you know. Or bring Mario to uh, the iPhone or um, Android devices. You know, that would be, be interesting. They can make a lot of money with that. Or, here's another thought, which would be really last case ditch scenario, last ditch effort scenario, is make games for Sony. Help so make, make some of your games for Sony, or license your games out to different companies, like Sony, so they can make different things. Or, license it out, some of their stuff to, uh, let's just say, some of these newer cars, like the Ouya. Or whatever, you know, so people can make games for the Ouya. Uh, whatever, if there's, if, I don't even know if the Ouya has like a main, quote unquote main, uh, company. Or get, you know, someone else to publish the game for, um, the Ouya. They also desperately, desperately need third party support. And really all, the only third party game that, company that they have sticking behind them like 100% is Ubisoft and we're just gonna have to see if they can try to bring on new people that's that's a big thing and also they don't have much in the way of indie games we see nowadays that indie games are becoming huge gigantic with PS4 games you know they're coming out with so many indie games Xbox you know since the 360 they didn't have an indie you know, indie titles being made. They have their whole indie marketplace. Granted, some of them are terrible, but every once in a while you get a you get a gem. So let's see if Nintendo can do something about that. If they if they have any ideas. Another thing is I I really want to learn about the new Civilization game. I'm a huge Civ fan, Civilization fan. Uh, the new one you can go to like other planets and everything, which is really awesome. So, let's, uh, I, really I don't have much to say about that one. It's just, I want to learn when it's coming out, if my computer can run it, and go from there. Finally, I also want to learn about the new Sims game, Sims 4. One that's coming out, again, same thing as Civilizations. When is it coming out, and can my computer run it? <laughs> so. There's a few things that I'm that I didn't write down. That's stuff I wrote down that I'm excited for. Um, off the top of my head, there's a, there's a few things that I'm excited for. I'm kind of also excited for the new uh, Call of Duty. I'm interested in the new Call of Duty. I want to see how it um, looks, how it runs, uh, some of the different weapons because it does take place in the future, so they can have a little fun with their guns. You know, they can make guns. You know, look a little futuristic -y. So let's just, I want to see how those will look. And also some in, things on multiplayer. I mean, it, it is the highest selling game franchise ever. Call of Duty, so let's, let's hope that it, let's hope that it's a good game. I mean, I talked about FPS's in the last Let's Talk. So let's, you know, and you guys know my feelings about them, but you know, I'm kind of excited for it. I'm excited for it, and it'll probably be a Call of Duty that I might get on launch date. So, it's really, 
really nothing else that I'm, off the top of my head at least that I can think of. Uh, that, yeah, there's nothing really off the top of my head saying, hey, this is what else what I want to, I can't, oh, Uncharted 4, the new Uncharted game, what's going on with that? Come on, Sony, give us the deets, give us the details. And also, the new Halo, Microsoft, I finally said something about Microsoft, I want to try to, uh, so I don't seem like biased towards Sony. But I want to, you know, there's stuff in every press conference that I'm interested in. And I'm not saying that I don't like Microsoft, but, you know, but last year they had a terrible, terrible press conference. Absolutely dreadful. It was the worst. They, them showing off the Xbox One, they didn't really show off much of the potential that it has, but more of, hey, this can be your all-in-one entertainment thing, which... I don't care about that. I'm in it for the games. I mean, that's cool that you can do all that stuff and it has three processors in it. But I don't care. I want, I'm interested in the games. Uh, yeah, Halo 5. Let's see what that's all about. If it is Master Chief or not. Because 343 has been kind of keeping hush hush on that. You know, they're saying, oh, it might not be Master Chief. It might be Master Chief. We don't know. So let's, let's, uh, cross our fingers and hope that they do tell us something. That's one thing that a lot of companies have going against them is when they don't tell, when they have E3 and everyone's like excited for knowing about a certain game, but then they just don't deliver on it. That's just what's terrible. And that makes them lose a lot of money in, uh, future sales because this this is really saying hey this is um this is this is the new stuff that's coming out within the next year or so so this is their this is their first steps to selling these games and these uh products well i think that's that's actually about it for my E3 wish list, I guess you can call this one. Uh, this will be a, I guess this is uh, E3 Part One. Let's talk about E3 Part One. Part Two will be coming out right after, probably the 13th of June, after I compile my notes and everything. And we are going to be, it's going to be probably a lengthy one. So you guys might want to schedule some work around the 13th, so you guys can listen while. You know, you of course do your work or um, do whatever. So that's E3 Part 2, June 13th. And this has been Let's Talk. And I will see you guys later. Oh, don't forget to check out PeopleAstudios.com. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Twitter. And subscribe. So again, James Skill City, signing out. Later.